Translation because there's this belief that a traffic controller goes and does uh, a three day course in uh, their, 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 their competent traffic controller, and that is not that's absolutely not the truth. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because we all employ guys that have just completed their course, and there's so much that occurs out on the road in the on, on the job environment which is where the real learning takes place. Sure, from a um, purely technical uh, point of view, uh, you can provide that theory over a few days because it's an uncomplicated job. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... It's just very high risk. It's very high risk, mm -hmm. yeah. So whilst it's an uncomplicated job, it doesn't mean that it's an unskilled job. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what gets lost in translation. Um, that uh, there's this general perception that uh, that it's that it's unskilled, and that's not what it is. It is highly skilled. When you talk to traffic controllers that have been uh, performing the role across a whole range of different types of clients uh, and industry sectors for many years, uh, you know sometimes your mind can bubble with respect to what their skills that actually delivers to client. Um, but it's not complicated. They're just really, really good at it, and um, uh, they've been exposed to so many different types of um, service delivery and, and options in service delivery that you tend to lose sight of the skills that they've acquired over time. But it's it's not a university degree. It's not a trade. Um, uh, it's it's really one of those jobs where you can learn the craft on the job. Because that transition from where it was generally unskilled and it was just really holding us off slow back through to where we are today where there are traffic controllers that have evolved into traffic management designers, um, they've evolved into uh, uh, impact protection vehicle, TMA operators, uh, you have a look at the uh, portable traffic devices that are out on the road every day and their, implement, their implementation and how it is that they relate to the traffic management plans that have been put together and um, guys standing on the road uh, understanding the impact of what it is that they're delivering on the public and uh, pedestrians and all of those sorts of things and how that translates to the client and then being able to solve for that um, the transition from the unschooled to where we are today has been so long and uh, sort of inch by inch that you really do have to go back 10 or 15 years to truly understand the significant change that's actually occurred over that period of time. Yeah, it wasn't, it's, it's not like one day there was uh, taxis and the next day there was Ubers and then the next day there weren't taxis. Uh, that, that, that period of time was quite short, so the impact was quite significant. Mm. The, the impact of the change and the transition of the traffic management industry and this is part of the reason that there's still this perception that we're unsophisticated and we're unskilled because people have hung on to paradigms mm -hmm. and there hasn't been that, uh, that, that disruption and that, that shock. It's like, oh, look at the change that's occurred from one day to the next. It's, mm -hmm. it's been years. And remember, we're, we're in a conversation at the moment about harmonising uh, training, uh, service delivery uh, and codes and regulations across Australia, because they're different in every state at the moment. Uh, that conversation's been going since 2015. Mm. And we may see a result in 2020. So we're talking five, six years just to have a conversation and implement a system that allows the states to work in a harmonious way mm -hmm. um, and to have <coughs> training delivered in a harmonious way across the country. So nothing happens quickly. And ultimately, it's down to their employer to provide them 
with the opportunity to gain experience to be able to upskill, for want of a better term, to be able to perform the work. And as, as far as I'm aware, there's no third party additional training, non ticketed um, courses around building those skills that has to be done on the job. Now, how does industry go with facilitating that? Obviously, some better than others, some only employ the experienced staff, and you see ads in Seek all the time, experience only. Um, yeah, we've got that many new people to the industry that don't have the experience, um, so they're either forced to bullshit about it, um, or you know they, they struggle to get a job. How does, how does industry go with the responsibility of maintaining or developing that experience for new industry participants? Yeah, it's always interesting to see experienced staff wanted for traffic mm. management, it's experienced in what's free way work. Yeah. Working with utilities, working with water, working on construction sites, yeah, so what, what is that experience? Um, when I look at the, 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 the many businesses that are in traffic management that are out there, most of them have a, an internal training system of sorts uh, that allows uh, the opportunity for those traffic controllers that want to upskill, that want to grow and develop their uh, acumen in the business to a actually do that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but it's kind of like, you know, um, need is the mother of all invention mm -hmm. or, or all improvement. Uh, those businesses might see themselves wanting to expand into, into other industry sectors and for them to be able to do that, they need a different type of traffic controller and they need to upskill the uh, the, the, the current staff that they have. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'd find that they would actively start to do that. Because um, that, uh, that makes sense. Because it makes sense, yeah. But a lot of people don't. Uh, well, uh, uh, annoyingly. Uh, actively train them? Correct. Yeah, I, I'd probably... I, I, would, I would probably dispute that. I would dispute that to some degree. Whether or not they're training them in exactly the right things, mm -hmm. Is, is probably more the case. But, you know, one of the things that we haven't done well as an industry, and one of the things that has, again, been lost in the way that we interact with, uh, with government and road authorities, there hasn't been a whole lot of guidance provided around what that should look like. Mm -hmm. You know, the, again, I think that's been born out of a belief that we're still unsophisticated and unskilled. Mm -hmm. Part of this harmonisation process, I think, has acknowledged that modern traffic controller actually has a bona fide skill set mm -hmm. that gets better over time. And I think what they want to do in this uh, uh, this, this harmonisation harmonisation process is provide that guidance that hasn't been there before. So it's really up to whoever it is that's running a particular business to identify what that business needs. And if that hasn't got visibility over um, a, a broader industry sector, if they're focused on one particular area, it, it'd be no surprise that the guys in that business, that's all they're trained in. Now, whether or not they deliver that training very well is... Into whose standard? That's right, but again, undefined, mm. yeah? Uh, and that's what this, again, this harmonized system will, will provide for. You know, we're talking about levels, we're talking about skill sets are that are attached to those levels mm -hmm. uh, and an expectation of experience in certain realms before somebody can move through the levels. Yep. There, there's clarity. It's even broader than that because right now what you might consider to be a great traffic controller might be a completely different idea of what somebody else Correct. in the industry thinks is a great traffic controller. Mm -hmm. uh, and it may be as simple as <clears throat> if those two tra traffic controllers found themselves reporting to you and the other guy, uh, you'd be going, wow, this guy's terrible. I don't know why he thought he was so good, but it's not necessarily terrible, just not as skilled in that environment because it's a completely different environment. Yeah. Because it's, a, um, <laughs> it's also uh, about the resources that the business provides, the yeah. transparency that the business provides. Um, uh, if you go from a business that's 
that's very well resourced and everything's there and um, uh, if you need more stuff then it's provided uh, uh, to a business that uh, maybe isn't as affluent, isn't as big, doesn't have the same scope. Well, you might need to be a little more novel in the way that you go about your, the day, you, the way that you might set up your ute and use your resources a little more sparingly and, and those sorts of things. And uh, uh, you might find that that traffic controller's performance is not as good as others in that environment might be because they're used to working in that environment. Yeah. Where this guy's kind of going, well, I need another two signs, or I need more cones, or I need a bit of this, or I need a bit of that. And um, uh, he might be considered, oh, well, he's not as nimble, not as agile, uh, not as able to work in a, uh, uh, a high pressure environment as somebody else. Very capable, mm -hmm. just a different environment. Yeah. So um, you, you see a little bit of that. And it's very much time. a game of you've never done it till you've done it. That's it. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah, you've got this sort of natural progression from your low speed, low impact to your low speed multi lanes through the realm of road categories until you hit a high speed divided four lane highway. Um, but you've never done it till you've done it. It's you know, going out there and knowing what has to be in what order on your vehicle before you get out there. There's always going to be on your first outing, like anything, first time you try something, you're probably going to cock it up. Um, but that's and that happens all over the shop. It's it's how it's how you, in my opinion, it's about how your business is geared up to be able to accommodate for that, and how you then react to that. Because uh, a lot of people find themselves out of jobs. You know, they cock something up, find themselves not being rostered again, uh, and then all of a sudden looking for a job somewhere else. So that individual is being categorised to somebody else's standard and put into a position where you know they may not be. 100% switched on about it. And that comes back to uh, businesses being a little more proactive in scratching below the surface of uh, traffic controllers' assertions around what their experience actually is. Yep. Dive into that a little bit more, understand that a little bit more. Hey everybody, thanks very much for enjoying the video today. I hope you got some value out of the conversation. Don't forget to like the video and share with your friends and colleagues. And if you haven't already subscribed, jump on and click the subscribe button below. Traffic Talk is Australia's only traffic management conversation happening online today. Have a great day.